Professor Campola, Shane, I want to know what keeps you at wake at night when you think about our young people and the world they're living in and the world they will be living in? What keeps you awake at night? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what concerns me is that they seem to be easily seduced into the consumerism of our culture. And the ads on television uh, make them, as some theologians have pointed out, certainly James Cone has pointed this out, that the artificial wants that are created through advertisements on television, I have to have this, I have to have that, I have to have this kind of shirt, this kind of car, I have to have these kind of clothes, that these artificially created wants become more important to them than their real needs. Mm -hmm. And consequently, their lives are oriented in that direction. So teaching as I do at Eastern University, at Christian mm -hmm. College, uh, I, I know what these kids have gone through. Uh, uh, you know, they go to college. If you ask them, why did your parents want you to go to college? And they would have said, I, my parents wanted me to go to college because if I get a good education, I'll get a good job. And if I get a good job, I'll have a lot of money. And if I make a lot of money, I'll be able to buy a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why they're so consumer-oriented, so materialistic. Mm -hmm. We've drilled it into their heads. When they were in elementary school, the teachers put figures up on the board. If you get a high school education, you get this much money. If you get a college education, you'll earn this much money. If you get a graduate education, you'll earn this much money. Whoa, I'm an educator. I think kids should go to school and get a good education. But a purpose of an education that we, we should be telling them that the purpose of an education is not to get a good job to make a lot of money to buy a lot of stuff. The purpose of an education is to become fully equipped to maximize your contribution to building the kingdom of God here on earth. Mm -hmm. Your education should equip you to work for justice, to work for humane values being propagated in the society. Mm -hmm. Your education ought to uh, prepare you to understand racial prejudices. Uh, it ought to prepare you uh, to overcome sexism. Uh, education should be equipping you uh, to be God's servant in the world. Whether you make money or don't make money should be of secondary importance. Earning money should be a secondary a byproduct of an education, mm. not a primary goal of education. One of the things that I, I uh, think about a lot with young people, and, and especially related to the church, is that the past few decades, I think we've spent a lot of time deconstructing things. Mm -hmm. But we haven't done as good a job at the constructive program of building up uh, alternatives. And we're, there are still people that are kind of post-evangelical that, you know, kind of make fun of Sunday school and things like that. But until we build up a healthier model of discipleship, um, we're, we're going to be in trouble. Like we can't just deconstruct things, especially deconstruct things that people haven't, young people haven't even constructed because they didn't grow up going to Sunday school, you know. So um, one of the pastors in my neighborhood, he said, uh, he says, what's the difference between a flute and a stick in the mud? Mm. And he says, the stick in the mud is still full of itself. Mm but a flute's been emptied of itself so it can make beautiful music in the world. Mm. And I think that's what, you know, we, we, we we're doing is making space for the Spirit and for God to be in us. But that doesn't just happen. I think we, we have to have holy habits. And so mm. things like solitude and simplicity and even prayer, I mean, they're, it's like we're, we've got to work those things out. You know, they're, they're like uh, spiritual exercises, just, just like we try to do physical things to keep our bodies healthy. I think we've got to do things to, to keep yeah. our souls healthy. I would uh, only add that... Uh, I remember a young woman coming to me at Eastern, uh, where both of us went to school, Eastern University just outside of Philly. And she said, I, I, I got great news. I got a job teaching school in the Abingdon School District. And uh, there were 300 applicants. And they gave me the job. I said, are you sure that's where God wants you to be? She said, I, I suppose so. I said, well, then I'm sad if you're not sure because the school system of Philadelphia, which is a tough school system, uh, 
was short 600 teachers this year. Wow. So you're telling me if you hadn't taken that job at Abington School District, that there was more than 250 other teachers lined up that could have taken the job and wanted to have the job. Why wouldn't you go where you are desperately needed rather than where it's most comfortable and where the pay is great and where the teaching is easy? Hasn't really Jesus called us to meet needs? I'm not sure you're needed in the Abington School District. I know that you are desperately needed in the Philadelphia School District to challenge young people to spend their lives meeting people's needs rather than seeking a, a professional position where they'll get power and wealth and prestige. Uh, this is what we, the church is failing to do, to challenge kids to meet needs and rather than in fact satisfy their desires for power and wealth and prestige.